Hello and welcome back to my channel. If you're new around here, welcome. I'm so happy you're here. My name's Hannah and on this channel I post a lot of anti-MLM content. So as always, I'll link a playlist right here for you and in the description box down below. This is the big anti-MLM playlist with every video I've ever created on this topic on it. And if that content does sound interesting to you, I would love it if you would consider subscribing, liking this video. If you feel a little crazy, you can leave a comment. All those things really help to support my channel and I appreciate you so much for doing that. Today I'm bringing you another horror stories video these are the personal experiences that people have had with multi-level marketing companies. They've written out their story, they've sent it to me and given me permission to read it for a video. If you do have your own story you would like to send in, the instructions for how to do that are down below as well. But before we read these stories, I wanna tell you about the sponsor of today's video, Scentbird. Scentbird is a fragrance subscription service with a mission to empower each and every person to express themselves through scent. The subscription works by letting you choose a new designer fragrance every month for only $17, which mind you feels like a steal considering the generous amount of fragrance you get. You are in complete control of whatever scent you would like to try. There's even a quiz on their website to help you get started. And then Scentbird is gonna ship you a 30 day supply of that fragrance right to your door. This month they sent me Catherine Malandrino Unconquered, Skylar Vanilla Sky, and Michelle Germain Sugarful Sunshine. The packaging is super sleek, super secure, there's a locking feature, so this is great for on the go in your purse or in your luggage. And the case is magnetic and it's very easy to swap out vials of your fragrance if you choose. I am so excited about the Sugarful Sunshine fragrance because the moment I smelled it, I went, oh my God, it smells like vacation. And sure enough, on the fragrance card they sent me, it says that there's notes of pineapple, mango, coconut water, and agave. This smells like you are having the most delicious fruity drink on the beach. This would be perfect for a tropical vacation. And that's what's really cool about Scentbird is this is a brand that I was not previously familiar with, but thanks to Scentbird, I'm now introduced to a scent that I love, but I might not have otherwise known about or ever gotten to try. And if you would like to start experimenting with new scents, visit the link in the description box below and use my code HANNAH55 at checkout. This is going to get you 55% off your first month at Scentbird. This means that you're going to get a 30-day supply of a designer fragrance of your choosing for just over $7 available in the US and Canada. Thanks again, Scentbird for sponsoring today's video and for your continued support of the channel. Now let's read some stories. This story says, Hi Hannah, I stumbled across your channel after going down the anti-MLM rabbit hole and I really enjoy all of your content. Thank you. I think you do an amazing job of addressing some shady sh that goes down in these MLMs, but you do so with grace and understanding for those swindled into them. My MLM stories are pretty average compared to some that you have read, but the more I watch your videos, the more I feel like sharing. For ease of my own anxiety, I'd appreciate it if you kept me anonymous. While I have been exposed to MLMs quite frequently in the past, selling Pampered Chef for my home ec teacher to earn class credit and whatnot, what? Wait. <laughs> Hold on, pause. That sounds like a whole story in itself. That little bit in the parentheses right there that we really glossed over, that is a story I wanna hear. The real exciting stories didn't start until during the great pandemic of 2020. I, like most of the world, found myself at home and with a plethora of free time. But I think what made me most vulnerable to an MLM was that I had recently just moved to a new state for a job where I did not know anyone. I moved in 2019, but had bad anxiety and so was just starting to venture out into the world to explore my new home and get to know people. My closest friends at the time were from my Taekwondo studio about an hour away, and when the pandemic closed everything, I was cut off from seeing them in person. Pair this with an extremely low self-esteem and blossoming levels of major depression, and I was not in a good place. Exactly what the MLM Huns were looking for. One day I got that dreaded hey girl message on Facebook from the wife of an acquaintance I went to college with. We had never been very close in school, in fact they were kind of awful towards me, so I I thought it was weird for her to reach out, but I ignored that red flag warning and many, many others because I was lonely and sad and wanted to do something to improve my health. So when she offered to sign me up for her great new fitness program, I thought I had nothing to lose. Turned out she was a rep for Beachbody and I had just signed up for a nightmare. But again, I was sad and my brain was not operating to the best of its capabilities. So there I was starting a Beachbody program with a coach that I thought might actually know 
what she was talking about. We of course know that it is never the case with these MLMs. I'm a martial artist, so I do have some level of athleticism, but was looking for a program that would help enhance that while working within some parameters. I have some past injuries from Taekwondo that prevent me from doing some exercises or require more specific care. I remember explaining all of this to my coach as well as the dietary restrictions I have. I can't eat any kind of dairy or caffeine anymore. I really miss coffee. She reassured me that this wouldn't be a problem and signed me up for a program that was designed for low intensity but fast results or whatever she she said. So I started the program. I drank the shakes and I did the workouts every day along with my virtual martial arts classes. I was losing weight and feeling good about it, but I first started to notice some cracks in the facade when the energy supplement she sent me for pre-workouts started making me sick. I read the label to find out it has a large amount of caffeine in it. And when I expressed to her again, how I cannot have caffeine, and if I could get this portion of the program refunded, she dodged my question and told me to quote, try drinking it in smaller amounts as if that would change the fact that I still cannot drink caffeine. What a perfect example here of the fact that Beachbody coaches really don't know what they're doing and they don't have any kind of qualification to be recommending you things. Here you are telling your coach your very specific needs, one of them being that you cannot consume caffeine and either she decides to gloss right over that to make a quick buck selling you it anyway, or she doesn't know that her product has caffeine caffeine in it, which would signal poor product knowledge. Neither of those are very good scenarios coming from somebody who's supposed to be your health coach. And it just goes to highlight that anybody can be a Beachbody coach. There are no requirements, no qualifications. If you are of age and you have enough money for the starter pack, you can call yourself a coach. And that is super damaging for people who join Beachbody and start using the programs and supplements thinking that they have someone qualified leading the way for them. The real kicker for me was about halfway through this program, I started having severe knee pain in my previously injured knee. The same knee I told her I needed to go a bit easy on because of past injuries. Her response again was to quote, suck it up buttercup, take a few days off and then jump right back into the program. Yet the pain got so bad that I was having trouble sleeping at night and couldn't fully extend my knee for long periods of time. Eventually I was able to get an in-person visit to a physical therapist who discovered I had not only strained my MCL again, but almost every muscle in my leg. I spent six months in physical therapy trying to resolve the issue, which even with insurance was a huge cost. That was back in 2020. And while the injury is healed, I still have days where it will hurt if I overexert myself too much. But wait, there's more. After telling my coach that I needed to take a break from the program on my doctor's orders, she was pretty understanding at first. At first. Maybe about a month after my PT ended, I tried to reach out to her to see if she knew any other programs in Beachbody that I might try. Not at all thinking that I should probably just run and never return, but all I received in reply was crickets. She never responded to any emails despite being very easy to contact previously. It was only through the customer service page that I was able to find out that my coach had taken some time off and I had been assigned to a new coach. I can only assume now that this meant she finally saw the error in her ways and quit Beachbody. But we are still friends on Facebook and she has not once tried to reach out at all or shown any kind of remorse for scamming me out of my money and landing me in physical therapy. Sometimes I get really upset with myself for letting her con me into this program, even if it did help me lose weight. I never felt better about myself in the process and I keep thinking how I should have known better. But that is why I'm grateful for channels like yours that help remind me that it's okay. Anyone and everyone can get scammed by these people and they will absolutely prey on the vulnerable. I have since hired a real personal trainer, a new friend who is actually certified to do the work she does. And I'm excited to see how working with someone who knows what they're doing can make all the difference. Thanks again for reading this, even if it doesn't make it into one of your videos and keep doing what you're doing. Your story is a fantastic example of exactly how people in MLMs are just not qualified. We've already gone over this, but the fact that she's recommending supplements that you can't have and programs that are going to further injure you and land you in physical therapy, paying out of pocket costs for whatever your insurance doesn't cover. Like it's just crazy to me that the desire for people in MLMs to make a little bit of extra money is so strong that they put other people's health and well-being at risk. 
it very well could be true that she thought she was helping you by giving you supplements and workout programs, but at the end of the day, it caused you way more harm than good. And I do hope that she did get out of Beachbody for good. She did realize the error in her ways and that she does feel at least a little bit of remorse for the consequences that you endured as a result of her recommendations. I'm really sorry that you did suffer those consequences, but I appreciate you writing this story out and letting me share it on this channel to be that example for people that before you try anything that an MLM rep suggests to you, it would be a great idea to either do some research on your own or take that product or program to a professional, to a doctor, maybe to a physical therapist, maybe to a nutritionist or somebody out there who actually knows what they're talking about and who has your best interest at heart because clearly very 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 clearly based on your story the mlm rep who is recommending things to you has a money motive they don't have your best interest as their motive and there's a very good chance that they don't have the credentials that they would need to be recommending you the things that they do this one says hi hannah i just recently found your channel after watching some mini documentaries about mlms now i'm not sure if this is much of a horror story but i do want to start off by saying I am a disabled person. I suffer greatly with CFS after having multiple cases of mono and a bad case of the shingles when I was only 20. It can be hard for me to get out of the house, so when I can, it's a great treat. A while back when I was able to, I did some low intensity volunteer work and sometimes after I was done, I would stop by the nearest Starbucks for coffee. One day, a guy around my age came up to me and struck up a conversation. He was nice and charismatic enough asking me about my work and I kind of told a half truth that I was working in video games games. I was embarrassed to just come out and say that I wasn't really getting paid and I could only do a little at a time. A little later on, he asked if he could get my number because he wanted to meet again to talk about a business his parents were involved in. And I said, sure, why not? Stuff in my life had been pretty stagnant and this might give me something to do. Later, I received a text from him and we agreed to meet at a Starbucks. At first, I had no idea it was an MLM. I knew very little about them, but knew enough to be wary of them. For the first meeting, he was just trying to get to know me as a person. Person, as I believe it was in that meeting that I confessed I lived at home because I have CFS. And he used this as even more of a reason why I should join because I could earn money, quote, while I slept. <laughs> the majority of the time, it was hard to understand what he was saying because the room was so loud and I have sensory issues. So I will admit, I just kind of nodded along to the majority of his pitch. After the first meeting, he gave me a book called Who Moved My Cheese? I read it and thought it was all right, nothing really mind blowing. So in our next meeting, he he asked me how I liked it and I said it was all right. That was when he began quizzing me on parts of the book and then referenced how it applied to his family business. Now I feel the need to make it clear. It wasn't till the end that I found out it was a company they worked for. He specifically said this was something his parents built for themselves. In the beginning, it was just talk about the obvious desire for financial stability, especially for someone like myself who can't work a regular job. This obviously all sounded good to me, so I was willing to hear him out and hope to find out what his parents' company was all about. It was in the middle of the second meeting he finally started to explain what the job was. He started to draw out these diagrams, and I was like, cool, I'm much more of a visual learner. And the first thing he drew was a dot representing me, and then he drew dots below me representing other people. And I was like, oh, that's a pyramid. <laughs> and I completely disinterested myself. But I let him go on because I didn't want to be rude and I just kind of nodded along to what he was saying. It was the end of that meeting, I found out his parents worked with Amway. I didn't know what Amway was, but I knew that what he was describing was not something I wanted a part of. He loaned me another book and I was still too chicken to say anything, so I agreed to see him again. It was then I told my family about who he was trying to recruit me with and got a big laugh from my father. I met with him for the last time to give the book back and say that I wasn't interested. Thankfully, he wasn't pushy about it and understood that it wasn't something I could do. It was all just a big laugh and I didn't think much of it. Then a mini documentary on YouTube about MLMs caught my eye and I gave it a watch. I learned a lot of new things about the horror of what are essentially cults that prey on desperate and vulnerable people people and it made me upset. I am in a very vulnerable time in my life where I have no means for my own income and struggle on a day-to-day -day basis. I hate to think that I told him this and that he still thought that I was the perfect person to buy into that sort of thing. I do wonder about him and wonder what it must have been like, most likely living in an MLM household and how that affects how he views these kinds of things. Anyways, thanks for listening to my story. What's always so fascinating about these types of stories of people who kind of unknowingly get trapped in an 
in-person MLM pitch is that most of the time they report that they don't fully know what it is that they're being pitched. They don't fully understand that it is an MLM or what MLMs mean or how MLMs operate. But at the end of the day, they still say, that's not something I want to get involved in. That feels sketchy and I don't like this. And then it's not till later down the road that they truly understand the inner workings of the business model and they confirm those uneasy feelings that they had at the time. That speaks volumes that your gut instinct was to be like, nope, I don't like it. Don't want to be involved, even without fully understanding how the business model operates. And what you're explaining here about him drawing out this triangle pyramid situation and you were like, oh, okay, that's not something I want to be involved in. That reminds me of the scene in the office when Michael is trying to convince people that he's not part of a pyramid scheme, but then he draws out the exact triangle and then Jim comes over and he grabs the marker and he draws the pyramid around the shape that Michael drew. It's golden. It's so funny. And it's kind of become this trope now that when someone is drawing out a pyramid or explaining how you recruit five friends who recruit five friends who recruit five friends, that that is the signal for a scam, for something you don't wanna get involved in. And that's kind of all you really need to know. If the person pitching it to you is drawing a pyramid and showing how you make the most money based on recruitment, ding, 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 we have a scam, run the other direction. So thank you for writing in this story and for highlighting that. This story says, Hannah, I finally figured out what the heck is going on with this random tea shop that popped up at school and I'm ready to spill the beans. I've been aware of MLMs pretty much all my life and was luckily taught to steer clear of them from an early age. No one in my immediate family has ever been involved with one, but a couple of my aunts have. One of my aunts is a teacher and she has dipped her toes into a few MLMs over the years. A knife MLM, probably Cutco, Jamberry, and Pampered Chef. Another aunt still brings all her crappy Avon jewelry to our family yard sales and has been doing that for at least a decade. <laughs> but thankfully nothing more than these aunts casually trying to sell it at random parties. My mom even taught me growing up that we shouldn't go to their parties or buy from them because the stuff they were selling was overpriced and from a bad company. Go mom. I can spot an MLM from a mile away, especially after binging anti-MLM content like yours on YouTube for a while now. But I live in the South. MLMs are rampant. I live in Mississippi and I'm a teacher at a local high school. All the teachers are obsessed with these amazing local nutrition shops that sell caffeine-packed tea. Even a ton of students show up in the morning with tea. Girl, Southern white women go bananas over these stupid Herbalife teas. It's wild. In fact, teachers were going to get teas so often that this local tea shop now does a bi-weekly tea delivery to my school. We get emailed a tea order form every Monday. Teachers fill it out, order which tea flavor they want, choose either Tuesday or Thursday or both to have a tea delivered. I don't think any of them know that it's Herbalife or that they are supporting a predatory company. Makes me feel a little sad, but also I feel like I'm watching a circus with how insane these teachers are for this tea. It's a personality trait at this point. Okay, so towards the beginning of the school year, the DECA teacher opened a cutesy little tea shop in her classroom. Immediately, I was suspicious. DECA stands for Distributive Education Clubs of America. It's a club and a class that teaches high school students all about entrepreneurship, marketing, finance, hospitality, and management. It's like a business class slash club. And you know what? The DECA teacher is one of the most prominent loaded teas is my personality teachers at the school. Like I could not make this up. The teacher that teaches entrepreneurship opens a damn tea shop in her classroom, the perfect storm. So this tea shop is student run. I'm sure she framed it as a DECA assignment or a marketing finance experience, I don't know. At first I see the stand selling normal tea like sweet tea, Arnold Palmer's, lemon slices, all in clear cups with ice. Then they added different flavor options. So things like raspberry lemonade, raspberry tea, peach tea, you get it. It seemed normal. A tea slash lemonade stand. Okay, that's fine. But then I started seeing all these colorful teas around school that did not have the local nutrition shop sticker on the outside. These bright green teas have a DECA tea shop sticker. I thought no freaking way she is doing this. No way the principal is letting 
her. I went by that teacher's classroom to ask a question and sure enough, I see Herbalife tea mixes. I wish I could have gotten a picture, but I will attach some pictures of the tea, the tea stand and the menu. Even the tea menu is full of super common Herbalife tea recipes that you see in every single Herbalife shop. This has been going on for months now. Okay, so pause your story right here. You did attach a few pictures. I will attach them on the screen right here. Here's a picture of a very brightly colored tea and it has the Decca Tea Shop sticker on the outside. And what's hilarious about this is this, if I didn't read the label, I'd be like, oh, for sure an Herbalife tea. Okay, crazy color, clear cup, sticker on the outside. Those are like three telltale signs of an Herbalife shake. They will never give it to you in an opaque cup and there will always be a sticker of the logo on the outside. They'll never Never splurge and get printed cups. It's kind of funny. And also alarming that they seem to have taken that theme from an Herbalife shop and applied it to their Decca tea shop here. Clearly trying to mimic an Herbalife tea. Here's a picture of the tea shop signage. It lists the price at $5 and here's all the different flavors you can get. Dragon fruit margarita. First of all, this is a high school. I feel like you shouldn't be serving something that's claiming to be margarita flavored, but okay. Mermaid peace love tea. Tea, Sour Patch, Southern Comfort. Isn't Southern Comfort the name of an alcoholic drink too? Strawberry Breeze and Wonder Woman. All of this is screaming Herbalife vibes for sure. I'm floored, I'm amazed, I'm disgusted, I'm confused. It's not like I can send out a school-wide email telling people not to buy the teas because it's a scam. I don't even feel comfortable telling people verbally. I told one other teacher that I'm pretty sure it's Herbalife and she said, nah, it's just like the one down the street. I think this stand is so awesome. <laughs> I thought that teacher was similar minded to me, so I haven't dared to tell anyone else. I have so, so many questions. Is the teacher just an Herbalife customer and buying lots of teas to resell for profit? Does the profit go to her or to the club? Do the kids know what they're selling? Does the principal know that it's Herbalife? Does the principal just not care because he's involved? Principal's wife does Mary Kay pretty intensely, so maybe he understands the hustle. And oh my God, I hope this isn't the case, but I have to throw it out there. This is a club and class exclusively for juniors and seniors. So some kids involved are 18. If she's actually a distributor, I wonder if she recruits students to join her team. I hope for the love of God, this teacher is not recruiting her own students. So messed up if that's happening, or at the very least sort of priming them while they are her students so that when they graduate, she can recruit them. That would be sickening. I have no clue what's going on, but I have a million questions. All I know is that there is an Herbalife tea shop inside of my school building, permanently set up in the hall, supervised by the DECA teacher. Also something I just now thought about, we don't get tea deliveries from the local shop anymore. I know teachers are often targeted for MLMs and they often take the bait. We work long hours, get paid too little, and have to deal with a lot of BS daily. Teachers are such important people in our communities. It's incredibly heartbreaking to know that MLM huns prey on teachers' unfortunate situations rather than demanding local government to implement change. The only people that can actually change the lives of teachers are your local elected officials. We need to start emailing them, demanding better conditions, and voting for those who promise to bring change. Improving the lives of teachers is absolutely crucial for our kids, our communities, and frankly, our country's future. Teacher morale is at an all-time low. Teacher retention is low. Nobody is going to school to become teachers anymore, and currently working teachers are leaving the profession every day. Hello, that's me. <laughs> we need change in a damn pyramid scheme is not it. However, I have to reiterate that selling Herbalife to a school full of 1,100 students and over 150 staff members is wrong on so many levels, especially when it is posed as a DECA club fundraiser. That behavior is not excused and should be ridiculed. Hopefully one day she will see the light and cringe as much as I am now. Thanks for all you do, Hannah. You're such an important voice for both teachers and anti-MLMers. Keep marching on. P.S. I'm attaching photos of the mermaid tea and the sign she has outside of her classroom door. When they are selling the tea, the students have a little portable countertop set up. Also, I swear a very sweet teacher that I adore bought me this tea because my period was giving me a hard time and she felt bad for me. A very sweet gesture, but the drink tastes awful. And I don't know why these things have teachers in a chokehold. And then you actually attached a second email where you said, OMG, I forgot when the teacher brought me this tea and I tasted it, I said, mm, that's good, what's in it? And she went back to that teacher and texted me a picture of the recipe for the students to make. I'm attaching that here because it is all Herbalife products.
concepts. So here's a photo of this recipe of the tea that was given to you. It says mermaid tea. You have energy rush, orange and citrus, green tea powder, guarana, pina colada, and hot water. Later you top it with aloe, starburst blue raspberry, Hawaiian punch blueberry typhoon. <laughs> what? I can't begin to imagine how horribly this tastes with all of these flavors mixed together. We have green tea, we have pina colada, we have orange, blue raspberry, Hawaiian punch berry blue typhoon, whatever the heck that is. This can't taste good, does it? I can't envision a world where someone would enjoy drinking that. And like you said, I don't understand what kind of chokehold this has on teachers other than maybe the caffeine content. That's the only thing I can think of because personally that does not look like anything I would ever touch with a 10 foot pole. That is way too many flavors going on for me personally. And honestly, I think you did a fantastic job of kind of pointing out all of the commentary that I was already gonna make, especially with your list of questions. Like what is this doing here? How did this shop get in my school? Who's in on it? Does anybody know that it's Herbalife? All of those are very vital questions that I would also be speculating. And if you ever find out the answer to any of those questions, please send me a follow-up email. I'm very invested in this story now because clearly someone is involved with Herbalife. Somebody is making a profit on this somewhere in the chain. I'm kind of leaning towards maybe it's the teacher who is benefiting from selling Herbalife on campus and perhaps the administration doesn't fully know what they've allowed to happen in their school. That would be the most likely explanation in my perspective. But no matter what the truth is, I do feel like someone obviously is making money off of this endeavor and that is wrong, especially when high school students are involved and you are disguising an Herbalife shop as a high school entrepreneurship club. That is so, so wrong. So like I said, if you ever figure out what is going on here and you do get to the bottom of it, please send me an update. Put it in the subject line that you've cracked the case and I'll make sure that that makes its way into a future horror story video. This story says, hey Hannah, I need to stay anonymous because I do still know some of the people involved in this. I will never join an MLM again and as soon as any business looks like it's structured as one, I know that I am not going to be a rep. It's unfortunate that companies like Usborn and Mary Kay are structured that way because I really love their products, but I digress. In September 2006, I was living in Louisville, Kentucky, working for a wacky, hyper charismatic church. I was very close to the associate pastor and his family and about five couples that were younger leaders in the church. A group of 20 or so leading couples known as the leadership team would have quarterly meetings and special meetings when something needed to be voted on or talked about. A rep from Mona V came in September of 2006 and sold to the associate pastor who had a party inviting me, the senior pastor, and a few other local pastors in the city. Ultimately, it cost $296 to sign up. You received several bottles of the miracle juice and you became a distributor. You made the most money by signing up distributors yourself. You needed three to start making any money from distributing product. I voiced my concern that I had only lived there for a few months and everyone I knew was at the church and was reassured that it was okay because I had this huge network of people alongside me that wanted me to succeed and my upline was there to help. I loved them very much and I trusted them, so I signed up and I got right to work. I spent the next few days talking to five of my closest friends and their husbands about this amazing opportunity that we could get involved in at the ground floor. No one in Louisville knew about it yet and to my surprise, I had four couples on board agreeing to sign up. So I contacted the associate pastor who was my direct upline and asked how to get them signed up. I told him who I had on board and he said, quote, we can't sign them up under you. They are on the leadership team. Pastor is having a meeting with the leadership team this weekend. Anyone who signs up from the leadership team will go under pastor. The pastor who made over $55,000 a year and had a car allowance, while I made $250 a week. The pastor who had a leadership team of 22 couples, my four were the only people I knew for 1200 miles. They would complete my task, but I couldn't have them. So not only was I out almost $300, I was never going to make a penny. I closed my Mona V account and moved back home by December that same year. Wow. So short and sweet story that basically what it sounds like is you did the work that you had to do of finding some people to recruit, but then you were 
told, oh, you don't get those people as your recruits. Those people, because they're on the leadership team at the church, they're gonna go on the pastor's downline, not your downline. Which first of all, I don't know how that can be allowed. I don't think that is allowed, but considering that this is a very tightly knit community of people, that's probably just what they told you. Like, oh, well, those are my people that I know. You're new to town. You don't really know anybody else here. And even though you did the work to try and convince them to sign up, I'm gonna get the credit for that. And it sounds like you realized pretty quickly that this is all about recruitment. And when you did find people to recruit and it still didn't pay off for you, that was your signal to leave. And thank goodness it was. I'm sorry you lost that $300, but at least you didn't lose any more by trying to stick it out and going out to find more recruits for your upline. No wonder the pastor is making $55,000 a year with a car allowance from the company because that person is taking credit for other people's recruits. That is super, super unethical and very messed up. This story says, hi Hannah, I've listened to several of your horror story videos and I really wanted to emphasize how MLMs will manipulate relationships. I think my story, although it's just one incident, is a pretty good example of this. It was the pre-internet days and I'd never heard of MLMs. I was 19 and living with my fiance. We had almost no money and lived in a tiny old furnished efficiency apartment while we attended college. A friend of ours had decided to try selling Kirby vacuum cleaners and they told him to find people who would agree to let him practice his sales pitch. This is the first step, getting the newbie to rope in friends and family by asking for this favor and as a bonus, one room would get vacuumed. Who would say no to this? Our friend showed up and had an older male salesman with him, an imposing polished guy in a suit. I don't actually remember much about the demonstration. All I know is that the vacuum cost a ridiculous amount of money. My memory is that at the time it was $2,000, but I could be wrong. Either way, it was not the kind of purchase we would ever consider making. At this point, our friend was just sitting silently while the older salesman was trying to talk us into the purchase. He insisted that we could sign up for a payment plan and take two years to pay it off, to pay off a vacuum cleaner? <laughs> That's when you know that it's a really big investment and a very high price tag. Clearly we weren't interested, so he got out his next trick, which is what I remember so clearly. He looked at me and told me to turn to look at my fiance in the eyes and repeat after him. <laughs> I nervously glanced at my fiance while the salesman said in a mock female voice, honey, what he said after that was something like, honey, I know we talked about a vacation, but, and I knew he was manipulating me into forcing my fiance to agree to buy this vacuum. It was so ridiculous that even I, a naive, nervous teenager who was normally afraid of authority figures could see it. Instead of repeating his words, I turned back to the salesman, laughed and exclaimed, if we had that kind of money, we would buy a car. The visit wrapped up shortly after that with us not having signed anything or made any purchases. To this day, I am surprised how willing the salesman was to manipulate two college kids who barely had enough money for dinner, to turn us against each other. Obviously, the purpose of these visits is not to let the newbie practice his pitch, it's to force the newbie's friends and family to all buy vacuums. This is so bizarre to me. This whole like role playing, like turn to your fiance, repeat after me. What is this, a wedding? So weird, so manipulative. And I agree that the advice to go and practice on your friends and family members is not really just to practice at all. There have been several stories that I've gotten where people are like, my friend told me that they were going to practice on me, but then at the end of the pitch, they fully expected me to buy something, even when they framed it like it was just going to be a practice run and I was just going to be a mock audience for them. Even weirder that he brought along what is likely his upline or somebody above him in the pyramid to kind of take over that pitch for him. I wouldn't be surprised if your friend was even made at least a little bit uncomfortable by this interaction. This experience seemed to immunize me against MLM pitches. Oh, I've been invited to all the parties and if there is one small item for sale that interests me, I might buy it. While I watch friends helplessly buy hundreds of dollars worth of jewelry or makeup that they don't want or need because they feel they have to support their friend or family member who invited them to the party. That's what it seems to be all about, to get all the friends and family together so they feel this obligation. The friend who tried Kirby, of course his mother mother owns a Kirby now. My friends had neighbors who sold Amway and my parents would avoid them. It wasn't possible to have any interaction with them without it being an 
opportunity for a pitch. The world was full of nothing but potential marks for these people. I think MLMs foster negative psychological tendencies in people, which involve a lack of connection and empathy. Very interesting observation. Because I do agree that when somebody joins an MLM company, they do look at the world a little bit differently. They do see their friends and family and pretty much anyone they come in contact with, honestly, as an opportunity. They see them as a dollar sign. From there on out, it's very difficult for them to kind of compartmentalize, like you are my friend, you are my family, or you are my customer or client. The lines are very blurred right there. And anybody they come in contact with is seen as a potential client or a potential downline member. Other types of salespeople can be manipulative, like the stereotype of the used car salesman. But you have to go to him, to his used car store, to end up having to navigate his pitch. With MLMs, you will be hunted down by friends and family who will use their relationship with you to make sales. Even in the best of circumstances, I can't see how that can benefit the relationship. You are no longer a friend, a sister, or an aunt. You are a customer, and the goal is to get your money. I'm glad to know from some of your stories that some people wake up from the madness and realize the harm they've done. I hope anyone considering joining an MLM finds your channel and changes their mind. It's not just that they will inevitably lose money, it's that they could very well find themselves in a position of harming people and even damaging relationships, or at the very least, exploiting them in their quest for a sale. It's poison for everyone involved. Thanks for listening. I think you had some really insightful perspectives in here, especially the one about like you going to a used car salesman and having to navigate the pitch. But now in the world of MLMs, you are navigating pitches from people that you know and love, and they are coming to you. They are hunting you down to get your money. And it makes some relationships very difficult to navigate because if you have somebody close to you in your life that joins an MLM, it feels almost inevitable that at some point they are going to try and pitch you and you are going to have to try and figure out how to dodge and weave around that pitch and kind of let them down easy if you're not interested in buying whatever they have to sell. Or on the other hand, spending a bunch of money on things you don't really want or need because you feel bad and you want to support them as your loved one. Thank you for sending the story in. So with that, my friends, it's all the horror stories I have for you for this video. Again, if you have your own, please don't hesitate to send them to me. I would love to read them. And thank you again to Scentbird for sponsoring today's video. Make sure you check out the link in the description box below and use the code Hannah 55 at checkout for 55% off your first month at Scentbird. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you and I'll see you in my next one real soon.